What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1.20 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming out of the Caucasus. So, Azerbaijan has launched a military operation into Nagorno-Karabakh. And if you don't know what Nagorno-Karabakh is, it's basically disputed territory that Armenia claimed was theirs, but it's really Azerbaijani territory. And Russia, for the longest time, installed over 2,000 troops into Nagorno-Karabakh as quote unquote peacekeepers to basically prevent Azerbaijan from taking back Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenia. But it appears now that Russia has turned its back on Armenia. And if you guys remember, I did an update recently where I shared this flight path. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And this is a Russian Ministry for Emergency Situations plane that took off from Armenia and went to Moscow. And now we know why this plane left Armenia for Moscow. I think they were evacuating Russian embassy personnel from Armenia because Russia knew that Azerbaijan was about to invade um Nagorno-Karabakh and that there would be chaos in Armenia. So rumors are floating around that basically uh, Russia coordinated this whole thing with Azerbaijan. And if you remember, Putin met with um, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, and they met like, uh, what, a week or two ago? I'm sure this was discussed with Putin, and I'm sure Putin gave Erdogan the okay to tell our Azerbaijan that it's okay for them to go into Nagorno-Karabakh. So I'm going to read to you uh, what Azerbaijan's defense ministry officially said. Uh, but we do know that Iran has placed a large amount of troops and equipment on the border of Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia. And Turkey has threatened Iran and told Iran that if they try to interfere with this situation that Turkey is then going to get involved. Turkey backs Azerbaijan, okay? And uh, Iran is not super good allies with Azerbaijan. So this is just huge news, guys. Absolutely huge. All right. Uh, Azerbaijan trying to take back Nagorno-Karabakh, which was under protection by Russia for many, many years. And now Russia has uh, turned its back on Armenia and is allowing Azerbaijan to take back Nagorno-Karabakh. This is absolutely huge and historic. And, um, you know, this shows that Russia is losing its grip on the Caucasus region. And now with Katerov, uh in a coma, it's possible that something could happen in Chechnya. We'll have to wait and see because Katerov was maintaining control over the Chechens for Putin. So if Katerov goes kaput, then, uh, you know, it's possible that some uh, different, you know, factions will take control of the government or there may be some kind of uprising against the Kremlin in Chechnya. So we'll have to wait and see. What's interesting is if you remember, I reported about a week or two ago that Armenia uh, completed uh, military exercises with the U.S. Army. So obviously the U.S. was trying to prepare Armenia uh, because they knew that this was going to happen. And that could be why we've been seeing so many of these doomsday planes and nuclear war planes the last uh, few days or even the last few weeks. So I uh, want to just uh, read to you some of the latest details about this situation. So the Azerbaijani Defense Ministry is reporting that they have already taken six Armenian military posts under their control in Nagorno-Karabakh and that they've destroyed 20 combat vehicles, 
40 artillery pieces, more than 30 mortars, two air defense systems, and more than six electronic warfare stations. So Azerbaijan is not joking around. They want to basically quickly go in there and take back uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. They're uh, launching a full-scale invasion, basically. Um, so let me read to you the official statement from uh, Azerbaijan's defense ministry. So uh, they said that an anti-terrorist campaign in Nagorno-Karabakh has begun. The complete withdrawal of ethnic Armenian troops and the dissolution of the government in Stepan Kurt is the only way to achieve peace and stability in the region and is unconditional and complete withdrawal of the Armenian forces from the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan and the dissolution of the puppet regime. Okay, so um, they're basically demanding that uh, Armenia pull its troops out of Nagorno Karabakh, dissolve the government. And, and hand it over back to Azerbaijan. Now, the international community has never recognized Nagorno-Karabakh as a separate country, okay? So the international community still recognizes Nagorno-Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan is actually friendly to Europe, okay? They're a European-friendly country, um, so for all these years, Russia was trying to basically prevent Azerbaijan from getting too powerful because Azerbaijan has a lot of resources. They have a lot of oil and gas, and they were afraid that Azerbaijan would, would become a major power player in the Caucasus. And so they used Nagorno-Karabakh to kind of keep them weak. Um, so this is huge. Okay, this is huge. Um, so Azerbaijan demanding the full surrender of Armenian forces in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and the dissolution of the government in Stepanakert. That's the uh, capital of Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, as part of local anti-terrorist measures carried out in the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan, regular long-term firing points and military installations of the Armenian forces were destroyed by precision strikes by units of the Azerbaijan army, the ministry said. So um, they're already carrying out precision strikes uh, as we speak. Okay, so this is absolutely huge news. Wanted to report this to you. And uh, we also had a VIP plane in the air earlier today, and it went from Colorado Springs to Offutt Air Base. This is a C-40C. And uh, these planes carry the president's cabinet members and um, other high level government officials here in the U.S. So they went from Colorado Springs, which is where you have one doomsday bunker. OK, NORAD, Cheyenne Mountain, there's a doomsday bunker there. OK, Cheyenne Mountain is a giant nuclear war bunker for VIPs and um they went from there to Offutt Air Base, which is home of Strategic Command. That's another doomsday bunker, and they can command the entire U.S. military from Strategic Command. Okay, so something is going on. I don't know if this is related to uh, the situation in Azerbaijan or something else, but it's pretty uh, serious for there to be a C-40C going from Colorado Springs to Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Uh, you don't just move the president's cabinet around between doomsday bunkers and stratcom for no reason at all. I want to remind you guys that September 23rd of 2023 is coming up in just four days. OK, so be on high alert this coming weekend because uh, we know that the elites, the New World Order likes to do things on these types of special dates. If you remember, the war in Ukraine started on February 24th of 2022, just two days after uh, February 22nd of 2022, which is 2 22 Okay. And if you remember, Putin met with Xi Jinping on 2 22 And then the invasion started on 2 24 And now we have 9 23 
23 coming up in just four days okay this weekend so uh be on high alert you know um something could go down we also have that situation uh on october the 4th with the nationwide emergency alert system test and in my opinion that's a test for nuclear war that's the only reason why the u.s government would do a nationwide emergency alert system test is to practice getting out emergency alerts uh nationwide in the event of a nuclear attack on the united states they would need to communicate that to the general population and let people know where the missiles are coming or where they're coming uh, where they're going to and the arrival time okay so be alert on october the 4th as well but if nothing happens on these days i can still assure you that uh, there is a very significant buildup towards nuclear war and World War III going on right now with NATO saying the other day that they're uh, building up a 300,000 man quick reaction force that's highly trained in the event of an attack on NATO. And then uh, ultimately they can deploy up to three and a half million troops so they're building up a three and a half million man army. You wouldn't do that for no reason, guys. OK, and then they're saying in the springtime, uh, NATO is going to have the largest exercise since the Cold War. OK, in the spring. OK, and it's going to take place right on Russia's doorstep in Poland and the Baltics. All right. And this reminds me of Abel Archer, 83, the big exercise that happened in the Cold War that almost triggered nuclear war. And I want to remind you guys also that the Bulletin for Atomic Scientists uh, say that we're the closest ever to nuclear war in history, okay? Uh, that's according to their doomsday clock. We're much closer now to nuclear war than we were during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I reported to you guys a few days ago about the uh, near shootdown of a British recon plane over the Black Sea by Russian fighter jets. Uh, by the grace of God, one of the missiles launched from the Russian fighter jet malfunctioned and was not able to actually hit that recon plane. But that recon plane could have had up to 30 British service members and it could have triggered nuclear war or World War Three. OK, so things are very serious right now. So just wanted to give you guys an update on the situation with Azerbaijan. I will be doing another update in a little while, and I will be going live later on tonight. So make sure you hit the bell notification so you can get notified when I go live and when I post a new video. Other than that, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.